Aloha ku kayaka yaka ko. On behalf of our Napo Okula, Kahea Lani Nai Ole Wong, and Scott Parker, we are thankful to welcome all of you to this virtual online event celebrating the life and deeds of Charles Reed Bishop. This year's spiritual theme is, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Remind us that we are all children of purpose and promise, and we are created to love God and to love others. As Naapua Opuahi, we are thankful for God's blessing upon Kelly E. Puahi, who married Mr. Bishop in 1850. Together, they faithfully ministered to our Lahui, and when our princess passed on, Mr. Bishop carried out Puahi's vision and mission to create the Kamehameha School to support the growth of the thriving Lahui. So, let's enjoy this time of fellowship with Keakua Manaloa and each other, and let us open our hearts and ears to God's word. Here's Kulaha'aha'aha Mana, Jamie Wangler, who will share our morning's call to worship. This morning's call to worship is taken from Psalms, chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish.
Mai ka puke o e peso, mokuna e lima, pauku i wakalua kuma e lima ai ke kanakolu kumakolu. E nā kāne, aloha aku i ka okoma wahine e like me Kristo i aloha mai ai i ka ekalesia a haavi mai ai ai honona. I hoolaa mai ai oia ai, hoo mai mai ana i ka wai au au a me ka olelo, i hoolilo mai ai oia nona i ho i ekalesia nani. A ole ona wahi pauma ele, a ole ho i mino mino, a ole ho i ke kahi mea like a ka i hemo lele ia a me ka hala ole. Pela e pono ai nga kāne aloha aku i ka lāko mau wahine. E like me ko lāko mau kino iho, o ka mea aloha i ka na wahine, o ia ke aloha i aia iho. No ka mea a ole loa ke kahi ina ina i kona kino iho, a ka ua hānei nō a me ka mālama i aia, e like me ka haku i ka ekalesia. He mau lā lā kāko nō kona kino, nō kona iho a me kona iwi. No ia hoi e haalele ke kanaka i kona makua kāne a me ka maku wahine, a e hoopili i aku i kāna wahine a e lilo lā ua e lua i hookahi i o. He mea pohihi nui ke ia ke alalo aku nei au no kristo a me ka ekalesia. A kā, e aloha aku ke lā me ke ia mea o oko apau i kāna wahine e like me iaia i ho. A o ka wahine e hoomai ka i aku our scripture reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 33. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving and not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with wholeness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they are already one in marriage. No one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are a part of his body. And this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery and I don't pretend to understand it all. What is clearest to me is the way Christ treats the church and, his, and this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself and loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Aloha no kako. Marriage is a sacred relationship that is purely God's design. When I'm asked to help a couple take the sacred vows of marriage, I share with them God's wisdom of what this blessed promise will achieve when they follow God together along this hallowed path. Two qualities are required from each person in this holy bond of marriage, love and honor. When I think of the marriage between Kelly Ipawahi and Charles Reed Bishop, these two unifying virtues are clearly evident. Mr. Bishop courted our princess with tender care and diligence, like a gardener gently tending to a rose. And our princess admired Mr. Bishop's integrity and chose him to be her husband. What kind of love did Mr. Bishop share with our princess? Like Christ who sacrificed his own life for us, Mr. Bishop rose to that height of enduring affection when he gazed into our princess's eyes and said, I do. Following Christ's profound love for us, Mr. Bishop was giving his life to Poi all of it, holding nothing back. Fully understanding the eternal promise that had just been made to her, Powahi honored Mr. Bishop and boldly responded to him, I do. From that day forward, they both followed God's plan with love and honor as their guides. We don't have any photographs or paintings that display the two in a loving embrace, but we do have a visual image shared to us in a song, Hei no no Powahi. Written by Prince William Pitt Leleaoku Alua, he captures a romantic moment on one of their trips abroad that tells of when the couple stood before the grandeur of Niagara Falls. Listen carefully to the prose of Lelehoku as translated by Kumulari Kimura as it delights our hearts in a way that no picture could capture. At the waterfall of Niagara, she saw the rainbow arch and the mist that spread all around there. 
she shrank from the water spray, shivered in the cold, and found warmth in the bosom of Hi'ile. Did you feel it? Did you witness the power of the thunderous waterfall saturate Powahi with its cold mist, causing her to quiver and drawing closer to the arms of her loving Hi'ile, Mr. Bishop? If you are able to imagine that love-soaked image, then remember it, because it describes what happens when God changes your heart and we begin to be more like Christ. Aloha no. First Kings 3, 7 through 9. And now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Yet I am like a little boy. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people who are too many to be numbered or counted. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil. For who is capable of judging this great people of yours? Allah. When King Solomon took over the throne after his father's death, he was only 15 years old. And God appeared to him in a dream and asked him, what is it that you want? What can I give you? And Solomon's wish was to have an understanding heart, a discerning mind to know the difference between right and wrong. What a great thing to ask for, especially as a ruler of a country. That's what we all should strive to have. Knowledge, wisdom, the ability to discern between right and wrong. It's something that really helped our elite to rule their people. My beloved princess, Bernice Pauhi Bishop was given the opportunity to be a ruler over her people. But instead she chose the, the role of a servant, be the alaka'i lave lave, who looked after the needs of her people in a very close and intimate fashion, by caring for them, by supporting them, by counseling them. And she chose a wise individual to be by her side throughout her life, her husband, Charles Reed Bishop, who had the opportunity to, to serve our people as well. When he came over from New York, he gave up his citizenship to help develop Hawaii into a nation that it is. As a leader, he had to have that discerning heart to know what is right and what is wrong, how best to develop things for the people. And he had a good example. He had his beloved wife, Hawaii, there guiding him along the way, showing him what she would do and what she did do. And so we give thanks to as we commemorate the life of Charles Street Bishop for the gift of wisdom that God gave him, that God gives us, that is available to all of us who just call upon him. And as we do, we know that we will become the alakai lavi lavi, that God intends for us to be, whether serving here on our campuses, or in our communities, or in the world. We are the people that can help make the difference in our lahu. Who are the people? They can help strive to be a better, this world a better place. If we just use his gifts, the discernment and not along, the ability to choose properly to right and wrong. Please join me in prayer. Mahalo keaku for your presence in our lives, for that which you do to guide us, to lead us in your paths. Help us, O Lord, that as we walk along that path, that you might provide us the wisdom, the knowledge of how to deal with each and every challenge before us. Help us, O Lord, that we might use a discerning heart to know what is right and what is wrong, and that we might always step along the path that is right. So guide us in all that we do. We thank you for the lives of those who come before us, especially that of Charles Street Bishop, that we're able to learn from their lessons of life. So guide us now, all and always walk along your path with a discerning heart. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs. With thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through Him. <laughs>